uh, which is the Marin Wood cleanup. So um, I have all your cards. I'm going to call the top one, but you are free to come up in any order that, that you wish. Bill McNicholas, perhaps first. Good morning, Madam Chair, directors, executive officer, and staff. And, oh, John isn't here. I was going to say congrats to Farmer John on his retirement and for knowing him for over the three years that we've been coming here. <clears throat> Anyhow, Bill McNicholas, a clean, clean up Marinwood Plaza now, oversight committee, the community organization which represents the community on the issues of Marinwood Plaza. Two items I'd like to bring up in regards to the prosperity cleaners in the plaza. Based on the events to date on the uh, board order in April, Hoyt appears to have been or has been slow in actively progress, progression in the work and resolution of the cleanup. Also, they also had their amended wrap, which was requested back at that time, rejected. I won't go into further detail. Maybe the best solution really would have been rejecting the wrap back in April. But I won't go into more details on these items. I have other people here that's going to be speaking following me. I have provided copies to uh, Diane White of the rejection of the amended wrap letter, plus responses, emails, and were sent to the uh, staff from Silvera Ranch, St. Vincent's, and St. Vincent's uh, School for Boys by their attorneys and by me on behalf of the community. Both attorneys are here today, and I believe they're going to be speaking. What we need is a firm date for Hoyt to get in the response to get them to reply. Without it, it appears that this could drag on forever, and as I mentioned to Ralph Lambert, he might retire before this is taken care of without a definite action by the executive officer or staff and staff. Thank you. All right, thank you. As you come up, if you could just state your name and I'll grab your cards. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, uh, board members, for allowing me to speak here today. My name is Raymond Day. I live in Marinwood, and I'm a member also of the uh, Cleanup uh, Marinwood Plaza Now Committee. Uh, I want to thank the uh, board and staff, um, and especially uh, to Farmer John for his service, for the many years of service that he has put in with the uh, community, and uh, his understanding and empathy for our situation. <laughs> and I would like to thank staff, uh, especially for their diligent efforts on behalf of the community to reject the wrap addendum number three recommendation, which was option one, where the discharger proposed using MNA to go ahead and uh, clean up the site, which is going to take over 30 years to accomplish, and there's no real basis for it, and even uh, the discharger's um, geologist has indicated in several reports that M&A will not work. So thank you very much for your support on that. Uh, I want to just go back and, and uh, just say that on uh, the, April 25th, there was uh, from the uh, remedial investigation um, work plan, the, that's April 25th, 2014, the uh, discharger was supposed to define the vertical and lateral extent of the groundwater pollution off-site and uh, assessed whether the potential contaminants would impact off-site domestic or ag agricultural water supplies. Uh, they were the remedial action plan, which uh, they were supposed to uh, have by January 1st of 2016 was supposed to include a feasibility study. They were supposed to evaluate whether what is, again, the 
the vertical and lateral extent of the groundwater pollution and come up with an implementation uh, and time schedule. On August the 13th, 2014, the board also decoupled the work from the on-site and off-site so that they could pursue them independently. And the problem that we have seen as far as with the discharger is they come along and they start doing work on one area, they claim that they're delayed, and so then they just stop and they don't do anything. And so then they start going, when we push on them, they start working on something else, and they say they run into you know some problem there, and they always have an excuse as far as why they're delayed. Uh, we were encouraged um, by the uh, uh, letter that was uh, given out by staff on April 19th, 2016, where they said uh, that, that the discharger, if they failed to comply, would be subject to penalties, and those would go back to the original date of January 1st of 2016. Then the discharger came back when they were supposed to come in with their wrap dated July 1st of 2016 on June 9th, requesting a modification of that date because they would not have the FS completed, the monitoring wells would not be installed at the proposed locations, and the delineation and stability of the plume on Silvera and St. Vincent's would not be confirmed. Okay, so have these things going on, and this is frustration in terms of the community as far as what is going on, why aren't they complying? On September 1st, then, uh, the wrap addendum by the discharger included the fact from their geologist, Geologica, that there's limited evidence that anaerobic biodegradation of chlorinated organics is occurring on site or off site. So, MA should not be used. Yet, in that same report, they recommended using MA as alternative one, because, and they offered as part of the excuse that it has, gives the least disruption to the off-site property owners in the use of their properties. The off-site property owners, the local residents, are not bothered by the fact that they're gonna clean up. We want them to clean up in the shortest amount of time, and we can deal with the disruptions. So I just wanted to state that point to the board to make sure that they know this is not it. Then on November 7th, they came back with an I'm email. Sorry, since, since there are so many of you speaking on the same subject, I'm hoping that you can uh, summarize a little more, more quickly some of your points. We, we would appreciate that. Okay. Because I've got more of the detail than the other people. They're, theirs are very quick. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, in their November 7th letter that they found asbestos and they have to go ahead and do that before they do the demolition. So then they're talking about Thanksgiving as far as getting their bids back on that. They've known about the asbestos issue within the building because they've had several chances there with all of the construction that has been going on with new tenants and why haven't they done it a lot sooner? The community feels like it's death by a thousand cuts here, you know, when it comes to the, the discharger. So we would just ask that the, that the uh, board continue to go ahead and put pressure on the discharger and make those penalties stick 
retroactively back to the 1st of January 2016 to enforce what the discharger is supposed to do. And we thank you very much. All right, thank you. And Chair Young, if I can just interject briefly just to make sure the board is aware that there is no pending enforcement item at this time. Hello, my name is uh, Robert Graham. I'm also a Marinwood resident. Uh, in principle, I'm uh, here with the, uh, the Oversight Committee. Uh, but, you know, I think when it all comes down to it, I'm, I'm here as a dad. I have uh, two, two young girls, nine and seven, and I'm here because I'm compelled to, um, to speak uh, based on my very important responsibility to their future. And uh, I realize that, that you face a lot of important issues uh, that you talked about, but this is pretty big for our pristine uh, little environment, and, um, and I think it's, it's pretty serious. Let me, let me just take a quick moment to uh, interrupt myself. I am very impressed. It's been a privilege to, uh, to witness the, uh, the farewell ceremony for Mr. Muller. I had no idea who Mr. Muller was. I've never seen so many discombobulated men and women in an open forum crying openly in my life. And it's just, you know, between the, uh, the surreal reality that we wake up today, it's, I'm discombobulated myself. I'm just I'm out of it. So uh, I just, I'm shocked and, and impressed. You had a senior staffer write a poem. I've never even heard of that. It's, it's amazing. I hope that when I've even done something for 20 years that it is even remotely as prestigious and, and high achieving and it, as admirable. I mean, you could feel the, the, the admiration and respect was palpable. Um, and, and then I come to find out that my older daughter was at his pumpkin patch as her very first pumpkin patch and my wife is non-national and that was also her very first pumpkin patch. So it's a little bizarre. It's amazing and, and bizarre. But, you know, so the water board is so very important. And I, I like to describe the water board as, as one of the most underrated organizations in the state, CAL FIRE, you know, the OES, uh, FTB. They, they all do very important things. But um, most Californians don't know what you do. Um, and it's sad. But all the more respectable, the, um, the work that you do. So I, I'd like to thank the, the other members of the board as well. Um, so back back to my real point because we have people waiting and I have a drawer a, a door here that's coming back on my knee, um, <clears throat> you know it's just the left knee, um, and so so the real message for me is is that uh, when I look at Mr. Mueller and and all the wonderful things and that people describe and I think about how great that is and then you take the antithesis and that is how I think of the property owners of the Marinwood Plaza LLC and their documented shell corporations and shadow uh, minority stakeholders who won't show their faces and don't show up to the community meetings and don't make statements. Um, it's, it's, it's really disrespectful to your work. It's disrespectful to the community. It's disrespectful to the environment. And it's disrespecting the future of, of my children and really all of the, uh, the children in the area. They, they don't care. They, you know, they, they're, uh, they've been described by other members of the community as money-grubbing leeches. So um, I'm not really sure because they don't state a point and they don't show up, but it seems pretty clear based on what I've seen so far is that they are operating in bad faith. Um, the, the willful disregard for process and, and how this has to happen and what needs to be done. They say one thing and they do another. They're making a mockery of this whole thing and I, I won't stand for it. And I think there's other members in the community who won't either. And I think we will want to reach out to our supervisor, um, Mr. Connolly, for another community meeting to really hold their feet to the fire. Uh, it's in our, in our you know, belief, or at least certainly my, I'll, I'll stick with my belief, it's time for enforcement. Uh, it's time for penalties. That's the only language these people will understand. I strongly recommend that the next steps be strong enforcement and ideally with penalties dating back probably sooner, but it sounds like the September, September 26th. Anyway. Members right, of the thank board. You. Thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, members of the board, and um, my name is Dave Trotter. I am uh, 
the attorney for uh, Lorraine and Renee Silvera and the Silvera ranches there. Um, I, I kind of wish that board member Muller were still with us because there were, you know, were a few things I wanted to say. He's not here. I'm hoping that he, I know we're videotaping this, so maybe somebody from the community can download this segment and send it directly via email attachment to board member Muller, or maybe not. Um, but I want to commend the board member for his decades of service. I'm also a, a a public servant. I've spent uh, coming up on two decades over in Contra Costa County in my local community on various boards and commissions over there. So it's a high honor and a duty that I know that you also care very much about. And the reason I wish that he were here is that um, uh, something that, that, that he did, he was a farmer. My clients are dairy farmers. Um, he took the time uh, after these meetings, and we've been here before you in the past, to sit down with them out in the hall talk to them about the concerns. They were able to, you know, express their concerns, and he got it. He understood that the Silveras were innocent victims here. He understands the challenges of being in the dairy business, being farmers. It's a tough economic environment. And I know that uh, uh, Lorraine Silvera, who's now 94, and her daughter Renee uh, appreciated that, uh, that he had his heart in the right place with respect to this matter, and I hope that you do too because they, the Silveras truly are the innocent victims here. I also want to say, Diane, that um, I also was touched by your nice poem. <laughs> and um, uh, it, what it lacked in meter, it made up for in heart and soul. And uh, I have just one other piece of advice. Please don't give up your day job for Poet Laureate. <laughs> anyway, um, with that aside, uh, the one, something else that, that uh, Board Member Muller said was, that he, he, he took credit for is dealing with all of the, quote, dry cleaner issues that have come up before this board. And I said, that's exactly right, because here we have another dry cleaner issue. And the staff has, in fact, uh, sent a letter on October 27th rejecting their uh, proposed addendum number three, which, which recommended, despite the weight of the evidence, that you should do monitored natural attenuation off-site on the Silvera property and also on the St. Vincent's property and basically leave it in place for decades when it wasn't going to work. And that letter was a very, very good letter with one exception. It didn't set a near-term firm deadline for them to turn it around and finally do uh, provide for active remediation as the preferred alternative. The staff has made that point not once now but twice to the responsible party and they keep on resisting. And frankly, we had a meeting with the staff and with uh, Marin Plaza, Marin Plaza and Geologic, all those folks on September 29th. My clients and I came in with a critique of their proposed treatment grid system that said your treatment grid system is too narrow. It's in the heart of the plume. It doesn't do what it needs to do, which is go the full length of the plume where we have current uh, PCE levels that are above the, the safe drinking water standards. And, and collapse the plume in on itself. You get it done in seven to ten years that way. There, we, we proposed that. I think the staff heard our message and they sent a letter that said you've got to basically do active remediation. We hope that the treatment grid system is what's done because it's the most effective for a bunch of technical reasons. So the, the, um, the problem here basically is that, well, that's the right direction. Staff has said, well, we can't provide a firm deadline here because that would, they're out of concern that that would somehow restart the enforcement clock. And they don't want to do that. And, and with all due respect to staff, and I had some conversations and traded some voicemails and emails with Ralph Lambert about this, seems to me that you could very easily say and give direction to uh, Rinwood Plaza, to Geologica, and it says, without prejudice to our rights to go after you for your pre-existing violations of our previous orders. We want you to get this back in as quickly as possible. I was suggesting 10 to 14 days because they've done the work. They just have to come to grips with the reality. And you can do that without prejudicing in any way, shape, or form your ability to take enforcement action against Marinwood Plaza if that's what uh, action the staff wishes to follow. And I would, I'm not here to push for, for enforcement. That's not my goal. My goal is for this property to be cleaned up for the treatment regime to do it as quickly as possible to use this treatment grid system. And we did a, a lot of work on that to show that if you lengthened it and put it in the right places, you could get it done better and quicker. Uh, and for this board to give appropriate direction to staff 
to set a firm, hard, near-term deadline and not let this matter continue to drift. My clients are the innocent victims here. This, this plume has already migrated over 2,700 feet from the former Prosperity Cleaner site, um, and it continues to migrate. The sooner we attack it, the sooner the cleanup happens, the sooner we get to safe drinking water standards, and my clients use that, that water in their ground for drinking water purposes, the sooner we can all breathe and sleep a little bit safer and sounder. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hi, I'm Stephen Nessel, and I will be brief. Um, I'm from Marinwood, and uh, first I want to thank each and everyone, um, but also I'm kind of disappointed uh, Mr. Mueller isn't here, um, for your dedication, because you are the people we rely on. We non-technical people who happen to be affected by um, the toxic waste in the ground. Um, and I, in particular, I want to thank uh, Mr. Mueller, and maybe we'll put it <laughs> on video, but um, because he was, uh, uh, I think, the board member after uh, Lorraine Severa spoke a um, couple years ago now, I think, about the effect that the uh, plume had on her dairy operations. And un he, who better knows the plight of the farmer uh, better than a, another farmer, um, how important water is to their operation and the health of our, our community. So, um, and I think at that time, if I recall correctly, uh, he advocated for a six-month cleanup program, which was subsequently changed to a year. Now, we're better than a year past uh, the cleanup order, um, and uh, now, almost two years now, and so um, the community is concerned because everything is still being affected. Nothing has really changed, and uh, this latest um, letter from the discharger uh, seems to, to the community, seems to me as a non-technical person, to be a ruse to extend the uh, uh, the time that it will take to do the cleanup. We need more wells there because you need to understand the speed of the plume and the speed of the, the, the groundwater or the, the gradient. Um, and um, I, I just think that uh, there's just a lot of noise happening with the discharger, but there's very little action. And um, we simply want you to uh, follow up on the order that you uh, initially uh, ordered. And I um, also uh, I'm, I endorse the comments of Mr. Trotter and my uh, fellow residents. And uh, one last thing is uh, we need a community meeting uh, with the board. Um, the board represent, or not with the board, but the uh, staff to explain why is there a delay, what's happening, because there is concern in the community. I'm a father too, and uh, there are a lot of people in town concerned about this. So please continue your good work and uh, the work of Mr. Muller um, and help us get this issue resolved as quickly as possible. Thank you. All right, thank you. Good morning, Chair Young, members of the board, staff. I am Michael Van Zandt, an attorney representing Catholic Charities of San Francisco, the owner of St. Vincent's uh, School, and um, do appreciate the, the diligence of the, the staff in including uh, Catholic Charities into the discussion that we have met with, with the staff and uh, we appreciate their uh, recent rejection of the uh, addendum that uh, Marinwood Plaza had, had offered. Um, but it is important to note that uh, as this process has continued, um, Catholic Charities and St. Vincent's is coming a little bit late into this process, um, and it's maybe an indication that when the discharger does not act in a diligent manner, uh, to address the contamination uh, of the groundwater and arrest it, more innocent uh, people, in this case, 
Catholic Charities and St. Vincent's are, are being affected, and that's unfortunate. Uh, the plume uh, continues, um, as Mr. Trotter indicated, 2,700 uh, feet uh, underneath Highway 101 across to the Severa property and then on to uh, St. Vincent's property, uh, and it is moving toward uh, Miller Creek. So uh, this is something that we are concerned about. Uh, we have ongoing operations at St. Vincent's, including a school of uh, farming. Um, there is a, an unused well right now that's in the proximity of the edge of the plume as well. So <clears throat> I agree with Mr. Trotter that um, we would like the board uh, and the staff perhaps to um, give some um, more aggressive deadlines to the dischargers so that we can um, get on with the actual uh, remediation of this site and not rely on uh, attenuation as a, as a solution. So appreciate your time and efforts. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, would the staff like to make a comment? I'll just say a few words. As you heard, um, we did recently, and the date on that was uh, October 27th, uh, reject the submittal, which included the proposal for a monitor natural attenuation. In response, we're asking for a detailed proposal that would um, essentially clean up the site in less than 10 years, which is what we believe is feasible. Um, I am not up to speed since that meeting and this letter went out about what the dischargers have been up to in that regard. We did get some warning that there may be some asbestos issues that was were going to arise as part of the excavation. Um, again, I, I don't know anything about that. I'm hearing about that today for the first time. I will say that the reason a new date was not set for the resubmittal of this information is because we still keep the original date in which this information was required to be the enforceable date as it relates to days out of a compliance. And that is how we typically handle these type of matters to maintain um, maximum enforceability as necessary. So um, I cannot tell you when the discharger is planning on getting this um, rev revised proposal back to us because I haven't had a chance to talk to staff yet and find out what kind of conversations they may have recently been having since this um, this letter went out the door. It's really only been essentially a week or so and along those lines. But I do feel like we are on the right track and we had a very productive meeting with the dischargers present and the neighboring property owners and it was, uh, we went into some technical detail about feasibility, which is why um, we felt comfortable um, with, our, with the letter that went out the door. And I think we haven't heard any um, concern about the approach that we're taking. I think that is supported again. It's the time frame for when we will get that information back. Also note that we cannot specify the manner and means of compliance here, which is down to the nitty gritty of actually how they do it. So we need to get a proposal back from them, but what we are putting forth is what we think is a technically feasible, reasonable time frame. So we'll be happy to keep you up to date as we move forward. So to, to get the, I think, the essential bullet on that, um, with rejection of the uh, proposed monitor, uh, proposed uh, uh, passive uh, response, the deadlines remain as they were in the board order. Yes. So there's no need to change them. Um, we don't need to go into what they are today, but, but we have a board order out there with deadlines, and those are unchanged. Correct. Thank you. And, um, maybe this is in the venue to ask the question, but I'll ask it. What's the, I don't understand anything having to do with groundwater contamination on the one hand and asbestos uh, in the building holding up demolition. What's, is there a connection there? Did the discharger have some explanation for why those two things are related? It's just getting their, their permit for the building uh, demolition that's, I believe, run through the city or the county. I'm not quite sure who's issuing the permit, but there are specific requirements as it relates to 
uh, controls that are needed for asbestos demolition. And so they're working through that. Um, but there, the, the oversight of that is happening at the local level through the permitting process. The building is being demolished because at that point they're going to further excavate the contaminated material beneath the building, which is one of the key sources of the plume. But issues relating to the aerial, both vertical and lateral extent of groundwater contamination, there's no linkage between that and no. removal of contaminants on the site, right? At least solid right. waste. Right. So we've made it clear. There are some additional wells that are needed, and we, we've noted that as well. We, we, and again, we're looking for a further evaluation on exactly where those wells should be placed in order to both maximize the work that would be done for remediation and also the, the, the trend analysis that will need to be done after they do the injections into the subsurface to monitor the breakdown of the contaminants. So. But the discharger understands that whatever permitting is required with regard to the remediation of the site vis-a-vis the asbestos has nothing to do with the groundwater and any interception wells that might have to be installed, right? Correct, correct. I think there's two things that, uh, t there's two parts of what we're looking at for this site. And so, yeah, I, f I just assume that they're just working through the last bits of what other requirements are going to be needed for the asbestos monitoring and control during demolition. But we don't have any indication they're planning on slowing down or not giving, we don't have any, we, I, I just simply don't know right. what, their time frame is for giving us a, a submittal in response to this letter that's just been out uh, not very long, so. Great, thank you. So, so what, I can't exactly remember all the dates and, and I appreciated the gentleman who was uh, speaking earlier about the dates and the <coughs> communication we have had and they have had with the mm -hmm. discharger, but um, for <coughs> our, I mean, they are right now on time. They're, they have been meeting all the... No, what, as the framework for the cleanup, the site cleanup requirements were set, there was a date in which you need to submit a remedial action plan that is acceptable to the executive right. officer. And we have not found, <coughs> a, we don't have a full and complete acceptable plan. Okay. There's been other aspects of it that we deemed acceptable because we wanted them to move forward with the building demolition, demolition and the excavation and not hold that process up while we um, further you know, went back and forth on what was going to be the, the, the long-term remedy for the groundwater that has migrated off-site. And so, um, so at this point in time, they're not in compliance with that original date because we don't have an acceptable re report. So what what are our options if they if they're not really complying and they're not meeting the deadlines? Like, do we again? I can't remember exactly what consequences we had in the. Uh, uh, well, with any um, situation where we have deadlines that have passed where we haven't received acceptable reports, then we can evaluate both you know, enforcement option, options, and you'll actually hear on your later presentation how the, the penalty methodology mm -hmm. works, which in this case for late reports or unacceptable reports is days out of compliance where we have right. not received a report, and then a whole bunch of other factors that further go into that in terms of that type of evaluation. But did they communicate with you before the deadline that they are not going to be able to uh, meet the deadline, or did we basically go to them and said, hey, "Well, the deadline has already they passed. submitted something to us okay, but by the deadline, but we did not find it acceptable." So we've been going back and forth with determining acceptability on various aspects of what they're they're proposing. So they have been submitting information to us. They have been doing work out there. They have been putting in additional wells. They have been collecting data. They have been moving forward with excavation of the building. They have been submitting permits on that. They, they, ha I, I, they have been responsive. I, I will not say they have not been. But they gave us a final report on proposing something that we did not find acceptable. And so we said, we're going to give you some guidance here. This is, this is what we believe um, needs to be done. And that's you know exactly where we are right now. Um. All right, um, this has been a useful update, as everyone is aware, uh, because this discussion.
came out of the public comment period and it was not noticed, the board cannot take any actions um, at this point in time. Other than I might request that the staff advise us as to when you might like to bring a another discussion of this item back to the board, whether it's as part of an EO report or part of a, a uh, notice specific item on the agenda. We will take your recommendation on that. Um, when you do come back to report to the board, I think we would appreciate on the basis of what I've heard, um, a, another discussion of um, the deadlines, um, discussion of any proposals for further enforcement or penalties, um, your, the staff's response to the request we heard for a, another community meeting with the staff in the near future, and I'm sure you took good enough notes to know that there were, were other items as well that we would want to respond to, but um, I would like to assure the members of the community that this item has not fallen off of our agendas, <laughs> out of, off of our brains. Um, but I think that's as far as we can take for today. Right, and we do plan to come back to you with that. 